Okay, guys, I do not hate these EK AIOs. Yeah, sure. I, okay, I threw one in the garbage, but right now, I kind of love them. We have had a bunch of new AIOs coming out recently, like the XT variant of the Corsair Capellix and LCD AIOs, which we just got finished covering. CPUs are getting hotter, unfortunately. That means higher TDPs or thermal design powers, which means we need better AIOs. That's not to say the folks who design these things have been like sitting around with like idle hands or their thumbs up their butts, but obviously with the new need, there has been a bigger push for innovation. Well, today we're gonna to be covering the new EK Nucleus AIOs. It's a series of AIOs that I have heard are amazing. And finally, you know what? I was just like, EK, I, I need to cover one of these. I need to see how good this is for myself. So they put one in the box in Slovenia and then they mailed it to me. And today I have two of them right here. So right now there are two variants, one that has the no LCD screen and one that does have an LCD screen. I say uh, available in quotes because both the 360 version of just the plain nucleus and the LCD version have not been in stock since I have been looking uh, since they initially were launched and announced. I, but I'm, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. So the variants are the EK Nucleus CR360 Lux, which is the non-LCD version, and that's $189.99. You've got the EK Nucleus CR240 Lux, which is $149.99, which is right here. You've got the EK Nucleus CR360 Vision, which is the one that has the LCD screen, and that's $239.99. And you've got the EK Nucleus CR240 Vision for $209.99, which is a $240 millimeter with an LCD. So now comparing these against some of the other coolers we have tested, and you're seeing like a chart here from a cost standpoint, you've got like the H100i Elite Capellix XT, which is a 240 millimeter version. It's 179 bucks. You've got the H150i Elite Capellix XT, which is a 360 millimeter version. That's $219. And then you see things start to creep up there when you start adding LCDs with like the H150i, the 360 being $290. But then you can drop down to those deep cools. You've got like the LT520 and the LT720, both of the uh, the five the 240 millimeter versions being $109.99 with the LT720, which is like more of their higher end, uh, being $149.99 and the LS720 being $139.99. So pricing wise, when you look at this whole thing and now we're adding this in and we're adding the Nucleus, you can see that these are coming in right in the middle of some really good offerings, well below the Corsair offerings, but still a bit above the deep cool offerings. Now, when you look at the cost, you might be asking, well, why the price difference, Roby? Well, let's go into what's different about these versus, say, for instance, the Corsair. First off, there are these are actually a lot more like the deep cool models of AIOs versus the Corsair models. There's no hub, there's no deep software integration like you have in the Corsair models. And if you want to get more about that, you should definitely watch our whole review of the recent Corsair XT AIO right here. It's simplicity in regards that you just have the fans you need to go to your CPU header on your MOBO, a pump header that needs to go to your AIO header on your MOBO, and finally an RGB header that needs to control all your lighting. For any RGB control that you're gonna use with a system like this, you're gonna basically get what you get on the motherboard. Unlike Corsair and IQ, where you aren't gonna have like deep customization, where you can have like balls down, bounce around on your screen and you, and you don't have things like, you can't change like layering and you can't change all of the different graphical things that you can change on a Corsair, like individual LEDs, et cetera. That's not something you're gonna get with this version of EK AIOs. The other thing you're not gonna get with this, which you would get with the Corsair and why you're looking at a higher cost, and this is gonna be completely up to you, is all of the monitoring and the ability to change the curve and all of the overlays and all of the other things that come with IQ that don't necessarily come with a very simplistic thing like what you have here from EK. I mean, this thing is gonna be completely controlled by your motherboard. So what about versus the deep cool then, Roby? Why is this still more expensive? Well, we're gonna talk about performance in a bit. I, I don't wanna spoil it, but I will tell you that the EK Waterbox version is a nice leap both in quality of life and in engineering above, above the deep cool. And let's, let's start by doing this real quick. So just, I want you to come in here real quick. I'm gonna unbox this AIO and I wanna show you, but first I gotta cut into the AIO so I can unbox it. You didn't see that. Somebody stole my knife. It's not in here anymore. I don't know where, somebody keeps taking my knife, AKA my dad. So let me just open this up. And this is this is just a little bit of thing is sometimes when you talk about the overall cost and price and effectiveness. So here's the EK version versus the deep cool version in terms of just unboxing them. I mean, they're both nice, 
But I mean, when you look at it side by side, again, you know, you, you get all your materials and it's in a nice little box, but this is obviously a much better, uh, a much better kind of scenario. So first and foremost, check this out, but this is the manual for the EK system, right? It's all well illustrated. It's all very clear to understand. Very, very nice and very, very thick manual. On the, e on the decal side, it's just like, it's, you know, it's just like a, a little pamphlet and nothing more than that. And then beyond that, even this, check this out. So this is actually how all of your components come for the EK side. So you open this up, there's all your brackets, your cooling, your tooling, all that sort of stuff. Just very, very simple in terms of laying out and very, very easy to use. This is what I'm talking about when we talk about quality of life improvement. You are paying a little bit more when it comes to uh, just the boxing and obviously the quality of the boxing, the instructions, and you're only gonna use that once when you install it. But I will tell you, this thing is actually a delight to build and to actually put inside of a system because of how they actually did this. And I'm gonna show you that here in a minute. And again, versus the deep cool stuff, it's just kind of packed together. It's all in a simple box. You obviously can tell there's no frills and they chose to make it no frills to make it less expensive. So that's just, that's one way to look at the cost. We've unboxed this, but the other thing too that I also wanna talk about is like, even though you have the unboxing and I talked a little bit about whether that's worth it to you, there's also the installation. And this is something else that, honestly, this is something EK really needed to, to do better on. And I ended up throwing away one of their, their uh, older AIOs because it was just so frustrating to install. To just say, to say that they have knocked it out of the park on this one is almost an understatement. So I wanna show you a little bit about what I mean by the installation process for this AIO by showing you how to install it on an Intel board real quick. So I'm gonna grab an Intel board and we're not gonna put a CPU in it or anything. We're just gonna show you what the install is. So here we're gonna grab our Z790 board here. The thing that is so cool about this is that you just open up your box. I'm gonna rip this poor box. So let's start with the bracket, okay? So one of the things that's really cool about the bracket, you open this up, and then inside of here is all of the things that you need for you know, your Intel. So we're gonna grab our LGA 1700 backplate and then our bracket. And both of these is actually really cool how they, they made this work. So what you do is you're gonna take your, your backplate, just stick it back here like this. What you have is you have this little tool right here, which is actually pretty cool. You take this little tool, and you're gonna stick this essentially inside of it, like so. And then once you line up the holes like that, you just take this little tool and screw it down. When you're done, do that. And then you just repeat the process for the four holes. If you're wondering what about the AM4 or AM5 version, it's the same thing. You're just gonna remove the preset brackets and then you just take these same pegs, they're the same ones that you use for LGA 1700 or Intel, and you just install them inside of the, the known, the known uh, into those same holes and screw it in the same way. You're seeing this bracket. We've seen a lot of these, which is actually pretty terrible in terms of, you have to like do this weird thing where you're like holding it in and kind of doing a screwdriver and you have like one finger and you, it's almost like you need a third finger out of your chest. No, EK thought about that too, so check this out. This is so smart. It just, it sits on there. So all you gotta do is take your little screw and screw, your, and screw it in. And then what you're gonna do is you're essentially take this with it already screwed on, so you don't have to worry about holding it in a really whack way, you just get that screwed in, and then you basically, it just works like every other AIO, you just basically put this down, you take the bits, and then it looks just like this. So that shows you how the installation is, but for every bracket, whether it's Intel or AMD, it just sits nicely on there, it holds nicely, and then you're able to screw it in really, really easily. That's so nice. Like it is, it's just so easy. Cause then you can just put in the four screws and then it's basically on there and it's, I, I'm sorry. I just, I don't know why anybody else didn't think of this. They probably did, but this is the first one that I've seen that actually works like this, which is actually pretty cool. Both the installation of the deep cool and the EK water block nucleus are very similar. Both being a massive leap ahead of the Corsair AIOs just in terms of simplicity. The fans themselves have one connection and they're very easy to daisy chain together. It's a proprietary connection though. So just something to be aware of. You can use other fans on the AIO, like everyone's favorite Lee and Lee Infinity fans, but it could complicate the installation depending on what you're going to add. Okay, Roby, you covered pricing and features, but what about the actual performance? Well, I am super glad you asked, and you've probably been waiting this entire time because this is another place where I'm seeing the Nucleus outperform 
all the competition we have tested thus far. So now of all the AIOs we test, we only test the 360 millimeter AIO version. So we have a standard and that's always 360 millimeters. They're only tested with the hardware they provide, which means we're not putting any Noctua fans on it or anything like that. You are having us test exactly what you're getting outside of the box. So these are, if we're testing the Deep Cool, it's all the stuff that came with Deep Cool. If we're testing EK, it's all the stuff that came with EK. We're not throwing Noctua's on Corsair or something like that just to give anything an advantage. I just want to make that clear. We use the same machine and the same setup for all of our IOs. It's a Liam Lee Landcool 3 with an Intel Core i7-13700K and an NMSI MPG Z790 motherboard. The reason we use Intel is it's actually a lot easier to understand the delta in cooling given Ryzen 7000 does some crazy stuff to push the limit for the CPU. But because of that, the temperature may always be the same at 95 point something. And this way we can actually tell the delta. Uh, it's just something that is, it's just kind of the way things work. For GPU, we use a big and chunky NVIDIA RTX 3090 Ti to simulate a middle ground in terms of GPU size. And finally, we use all of the best Noctua fans to fill all the slots in the case to ensure the best possible results for any AIO. So first off, let's kick it off with idle temps for CPU, meaning that the PC is just sitting here. You can see that the Nucleus is sitting right around the same spot as the best performing LS720 with a three degree lead over the LCD XT from Corsair. When we put the CPU under load, we can actually see that the Nucleus is killing it on cooling with the largest drop so far below the older Corsair H150i Elite Capellix coming in at 83 degrees, while everyone else is sitting at a nice and comfy 86 with one at 85. Now these are stacked from highest to lowest. So when we look at this whole thing and all the data, it looks like EK has built one heck of a cooler. And when you look at that versus the price, it also looks like it's a relatively good value. So we just made this nice little chart here that again, just to give you an idea of what this would look like, just so you can see here what value is. And these are stacked from least value all the way to lowest value where smallest is actually better. So what you're paying for in the end is you're paying for quality of life improvements when it comes to the installation, some packaging for sure, which is also quality of life, but also some engineering specifically when it comes to the pump and architecture for this AIO. I know some of that is one time use and, and that's gonna be up to you in terms of if that makes it worth it. But what is worth it, and it's what it's hard not to argue against, is what this means for potential when it comes to overclocking and also what this means for long-term wear and tear on your PC. So wrapping this all up, Roby, what do you think? What I think is, is EK knocked it out of the park for this one. Where they really needed to bring it with this new version, they really did, both in cost and experience and in performance. I mean, it was like, basically it's like a, it's like a triple play. I mean, it's, it literally is one of the best AIOs we've tested. And I'm very, very excited with both the price and the experience you get when you basically do this installation, when you actually use this AIO. What the biggest issue is, is when is it's in stock? And I'd love to know your opinion, again, on all the things we covered. Number one, did we cover everything you wanted to know? We showed installation, we showed cost, we showed performance, we showed value, but is there anything we missed? Let us know that and more down in the comments below. Now, while you're down there, make sure you slap that subscribe button, whip that like button and ring the notification bell so you get a notification each and every time we do a video just like this here on Robitech. If you uh, wanna have other questions and you wanna see something like us installing this live, you should check out Robitech Live. In fact, it's a great place for you to see us trust tons of new hardware, new cases, et cetera, and watch it live and have the discussion right there with us. You can check that over at youtube.com slash Robitech Live. Also, if you have further questions, you just wanna continue the discussion, you should join our Discord server over at discord.gg slash Robitech. It's a great place filled with other tech and PC enthusiasts that love to chat about these very subjects. And you know what? You might make a friend. Outside of that, guys, you can follow us at Robitech absolutely everywhere. We hope you enjoy this episode and we look forward to seeing you on the next one.